folks, we're back. Uh, this is Anthony Waits from the Marketplace. I'm here with um, one of the key ste statement stakeholders in the community. And he's responsible, believe it or not, this is the Director of Aviation, the CEO of the Miami International Airport. And it's Emilio uh, Gonzalez with me. Emilio, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Great presentation. You know, transportation is so critical to any growing city or any growing community. And you literally have the world at your doorstep, particularly the Pan American region. Um, where do you see, and I travel Miami, not internationally all the time, where do you see this going in terms of what's happening in terms of transportation, automation, uh, shared economy, uh, international flights coming and going? Yeah, yeah, we, we are, we are going to be the next global gateway, Miami International Airport. Like that. We're always going to be the, the gateway to Latin America. Awesome. I'm going to take this back. There's a bigger world out there. And uh, we're looking for flights out to Asia, to Africa, uh, some parts of Europe that we don't have coverage. But the fact is, is to promote trade and to grow our community, we have to grow our airport. It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. You talked about how large your cargo operation is. I mean, fascinating. I mean, if it, was that a conscious yeah, yeah. effort to do that, or did it just happen now? No, it, it, it's the largest cargo airport in the United States. It, it's a huge business for us. Um, it's also a huge generator of jobs in this community. So while it doesn't uh, affect our bottom line so much as maybe 10% of our revenues, it still provides in the sense of hundreds of thousands of jobs in this community. So, so we take very good care of our cargo facility. We want to grow them, to renovate them, we want to introduce technology. Uh, and we also know that we have to be cognizant that there are other airports there that are concerned. And they're not selling. So we're, we're constantly working with the cargo continues to be in the And what do you say to the people in the Caribbean and Latin America that are challenged? A lot of legacy airlines are either cutting back, scaling back routes, and they're trying to figure out where do they connect? They come in and out of the region. But they I know they're, they're, they're cutting back routes, but it's interesting because the bigger airlines are adding routes. I think that Miami is going to be the place where anybody in the Caribbean can come to and go anywhere in the world. It really is, whether direct or one stop. Right now, you can do it one stop, and my plan is to make sure that from Miami you can fly direct to any part of the world you want. It's, it's a process, it's not always fast, but we, we have a plan, and we stick to our plan, and it's worked well. And I'm, I'm, seeing the, I'm seeing the fruit of the investment. Thank you, sir. I, I see it uh, manifesting each time I come into the airport. Right, thank Amelia, you. thank you. I look forward to following with you, and thank you so much for being on the market. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. You might see me anytime you want. Sure. Okay, that's great. Uh, Alice? All right, folks. Um, so we're pretty much wrapping up the uh, conference here. And uh, my final interview is going to be with Alice Bravo. She is the Director of uh, Transportation and Public Works. And so I'm looking forward to talking to her because she has a heck of a challenge on her hands. The city is growing tremendously. Miami, uh, the South Florida area, is growing by leaps and bounds. And obviously the infrastructure requirement is, 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 is um, a, a, a continuing task because it's about managing people moving people, you know, and getting things done. So uh, I'm looking forward to my conversation, looking forward to having a conversation with, with, with Alice here, um, um, who is uh, Alex, Alice Bravo. All right, so while I wait for Alice to, to come over to the camera, um, I just let me just say that uh, this is my second uh, Invest Miami um, conference. It's important uh, for for our role and our relationship with the conference because uh, Capital Analytics is a strategic partner with SETI and in terms of how do we uh, foster and grow, grow the economies both in the Caribbean, in the Virgin Islands, in South Florida. And so Invest Miami is uh, one of our collaborative partners. Abby Malone is one of the uh, uh, contributing think tank members for, for SETI. And uh, she did a great job, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to talk to her uh, in a little bit. So um, I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to have that. So uh, anyway, so we will have Alice here in just a second while, we, while she's coming over to the camera. All right. I'm sorry, so Edison, I, I think uh, this is going to... What we'll do after this, uh, we'll probably get some B-rolls uh, and talk maybe uh, talk to Abby at, at the end, uh, just to close okay. out.
folks out the uh, the conference. And so hopefully we can get uh, we can get Alice over here. We're live. <laughs> hey, Alice, how are you? You did such a great job in your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I got to tell you, I have to admire you because uh, as we as we look at the, the speak to the audience, we have people from literally from New York, from Boston, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC, throughout the Caribbean, and across the South America, at our audience. Folks come to South Florida, fly into Miami for personal reasons, personal business, investment, and movement, transportation is so critical for, you know, for people to be able to get from point A to point B. You guys are growing, you have a great problem. Um, the task of fixing that. Tell us, give us some insight as to where you see it now and where you see it, where we're going in the future. Well, um, most importantly, we've created something called the SMART Plan, and this is the Strategic Miami Area Rapid Transit Plan. And basically, we want to build upon our 25-mile elevated metro rail system and build six corridor expansions throughout the county. We have a beach corridor from downtown to Miami Beach, a northeast corridor that runs from downtown Miami up the coastline, Biscayne Boulevard, to Aventura, a north corridor up to the county line to the Dolphin Stadium, an east-west corridor from the airport out to Florida International Bureau, University, a Kendall corridor and a South corridor that will connect people all the way to Florida City and Homestead. Um, so this is a real mobility solution that as we implement these corridors, we'll have a car optional community and we'll have mobility for the people that live here and our visitors. Okay. Which is so important because, you know, living in New York for, for 20 years, one of the things that I really liked was the fact that I didn't need to jump in a car. I could jump into the transit system and get from the to the point of point at any time, any time of the day. And to hear that you said in terms of that rapid transit system and that investment in the building and out is going to be so key and critical to growing Miami. And so I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the fact that when people think of transit system, uh, and they think of how elaborate you know, places like New York and UK are. Uh, obviously, those places have subways. Uh, is there going to ever be that does the terrain lend to having subways, or we're never going to see subways in in um, Miami? Sub subways are tough here because of the water table. <laughs> um, but the equivalent of a subway in, in Miami is our elevated metro rail system. And in downtown Miami, we have an elevated uh, metro mover system. So this is the, the smaller train that goes in between the different office buildings. Uh, we have two extensions to that system, and we're planning a few more extensions. Um, so that's our equivalent of the subway. It's even better than a subway. You get to ride around it. and see how beautiful it is Miami absolutely is. absolutely scenic. It is. Exactly. That's an excellent point. Right. As we get out into the suburbs with the smart plan, that's where we'll have an at-grade rail solution, just like you do in most cities throughout the so, country. So when you say smart plan, I'm thinking like what comes to mind are smart cities. Correct. Is, is Miami considered, uh, or do you have a smart city uh, master plan? We are well on our way uh, with our smart cities program. Uh, we were recently dubbed the Internet of Things leading Real city nice, in nice. the country. Nice. Um, and basically we're, we have a plan to implement smart cities. So these are adaptive traffic signals that are going to actually see real time what's happening with traffic and make adjustments so that we can maximize the efficiency nice. of traffic flow. And this lets us lay in the infrastructure needed to communicate with autonomous vehicles, which are already appearing in our marketplace. Um, so we're going to have a lot of data and we're going to use that data through smart cities formats um, to plan the movement of all kinds of vehicles, whether it's police, fires, solid waste, etc. So we can help alleviate congestion more. And we're working very closely with our ride sharing companies such as Uber and Lyft. Uh, to promote uh, solutions that are compatible with our transit. So maybe you can take the metro rail to a certain destination and take an Uber pool or lift uh, to your final destination. Automation. We see, we see how technology is totally transforming uh, every sector, every economy. Uh, are you embracing it in a very good way? Or are you saying, you know, this legacy infrastructure transition to automation, innovation, is it, are, you, are you really looking forward to it? Or how, how does it feel to have to deal, try, try to incorporate with the technology aspect? Well, the mayor of Miami-Dade County, Carlos Jimenez, is all about technology and using Great. that technology Great. to leverage our infrastructure nice. to the maximum limit. So we're developing uh, apps that give you real-time information about our trains and buses. 
Uh, we have going to have free Wi-Fi on all our trains and buses. Whoa. And we're going to have digital kiosks at our stations that are interactive nice. and nice. give you free Wi-Fi and a 200 foot radius. Um, so our, our app gives you trip planning features. And now you'll be able to pay for your transit trip on our app. It's called Easy Pay. And that's going to let us uh, have promotions with our customers and communicate with them. Um, so the, the internet on, on the buses and the Wi-Fi, right now we have it on, on the trains. We have free Wi-Fi. Now we're going to have it on our buses. Um, so we, we see people, when they're riding on the bus or train, they're using that time. They're reading a book. They're reading their email. They're surfing the web. They're making a better use of their time to be stuck in traffic. But, what we want to convince everybody is not to be in a car by themselves. If we get people to ride share or ride share to a transit system, then uh, we improve mobility in the county. And finally, the, the, I, for the first time, I purchased one of those uh, devices for the SunPass. On my last trip, we went out here uh, last month. And I see now you've uh, de uh, de demolished a lot of the boots, the, the toll boots. And I'm having, I, I don't know, so unless I'm paying attention to the internet of everything and all these wireless connections, are we going to see totally uh, uh, bootless uh, input highways and byways throughout Miami and, and more? Uh, uh, that's definitely the case. Um, Miami-Dade County has but I have to get used to that, toll plazas on a couple of causeways yeah. and we're going to electronic tolling. And, and that's really the way for the future. Why should you have to stop on your trip to drop a quarter into a basket? That, you can just keep driving, right? That's something. I appreciate that. That's old, that is definitely old school. Yeah. So, I also want to thank you so much for taking thank the time. You, Anything you. else you'd like to share with our audience uh, that I didn't uh, talk about? Uh, well, I want to encourage everyone to download our Miami Dade Transit Tracker app and use our trip planning feature. We've integrated a lot of the trolleys that are run by our different cities here the into the trip planning feature so you can see your trip, how it would be on a metro rail, transfer to a, a trolley, to get to your final destination, stress-free, leave the driving to us. And oh, I forgot, I almost forgot, you know those bullet trains, we've seen those uh, real fast trains. Is anything on the horizon in terms of uh, between here and Tallahassee or anything like that? Uh, uh, well, there's a, a, a company called All Aboard. All Aboard. They've developed a bright line service. They're very soon going to start the operation between Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and Palm Beach. Nice. And in a year or so, they'll be able to extend that to Orlando. And we're also evaluating the Hyperloop technology. Yes, a lot of talk about that. Maglev and a vacuum tube. And so we're evaluating a high speed corridor between Miami and Orlando, where that could possibly be a 30 minute trip sometime in the future. This is good stuff, Alice. The technology. It's all about I'm the technology. I'm hoping to be able to follow the progress. Uh, hopefully, next time we're in town, we can follow up and check in and see how things are going from the conference. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be on the Marketplace. Thank you. And with us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was uh, Alice Bravo, the uh, Director of Transportation and uh, Public Works here in Miami. Thank you so much. This is Anthony Wiggs at the Marketplace. We'll talk soon.